the question is the best method to evaluate a bone defect is see when you're using when periodontal diseases the problem what happens is you have pocket formation and at the same time you have bone loss so when you have bone loss as we know the types of bone loss are either they are horizontal or they are vertical now vertical bone loss when you look in the radiograph into the radiograph you can see them as arc shaped this you know uh, bone defects or you can even for horizontal bone defects you can just see that the entire bone is lost for example if this is my tooth and if this is the root this is the cj and if this is my alveolar bone when there is loss of this bone over here and here when there is loss that means this is a horizontal bone loss in a lot of situations what will happen is there will be bone loss over here and here so the tooth will appear like this however all this is only under the radiograph now the problem with radiographs is they are two dimensional they do not help you to identify if there is any bone loss in the interdental area like for example what is present right below the pole gingival pole the bone which is there the interdental septum that is there over there it is difficult to identify whether there is going to be any bone loss or not that is why the best method actually when you have to identify whether there is bone loss or not the best method to identify the type of bone defect that is whether it is horizontal or vertical and if it is vertical which type of vertical bone defect it is the best way to identify that is simply by the means of a uh, raising a flap and looking it into it directly that means what you are doing is you are raising a flap and you are directly looking into the area of the defect when such a situation occurs what happens is you are directly probing into the area of the defect and you are able to identify the type of morphology of the pattern of bone loss that is whether the bone loss is vertical is it horizontal if it's an osseous crater if it's a three wall defect two wall defect one wall defect whatever be the case that makes it easy however when it comes to uh, the options that are given over here you will notice that you have transgingival probing you have use of florida probe bite wing radiographs and periapical radiographs okay so periapical radiographs for for periodontology specifically they are specific in nature so they help to increase the specificity okay pike wing radiographs as we know are useful to identify calculus and at the same time for proximal surface lesions now coming to these two as i told you also in the periapical radiographs as i mentioned to you for periapical radiographs it is the problem with pas are that they are two dimensional so when it is an interdental crater or something you cannot identify it now coming to transgingival probing as well as use of a florida probe the florida probe has two main functions one it is a 4 mm calibrated probe this probe helps to identify the depth of the bone loss sorry of the pocket and at the same time it also helps to identify the cej it is an automated probe and it helps to identify the depth of the pocket however it does not it and it helps to identify the cj however it does not help you to identify what is the morphology of the bone pattern so what you do is amongst the since we are not raising and in the option the uh, in the given options you do not have raising a flap and directly carrying out a surgical intervention the best answer would be transgingival probing now i'll get into the details of why the answer is transgingival probing see what happens in transgingival probing is you take you anesthetize the entire arch that you want to uh, assess after you give local anesthesia and you have to give local anesthesia because you are literally probing all the way into the bone you have to be able to feel the bone with your probe so in such a situation you are literally kind of rupturing the functional epithelium so when you are doing such a thing if you do not give local anesthesia the patient will jump and literally wince in pain that is why you give local anesthesia you take a probe and you go all the way below the uh, uh, junctional epithelium and you probe until you hit hard bone like how when you are giving anesthesia you hit bone the same way you will take a probe and you will hit the bone and you continue to walk circumferentially around the tooth what does this help us this helps to identify any type of bone defect that is present whether it is a fenestration it is a dehiscence it is a crater like if you can see in this image this is what transgingival probing is where you will insert the probe all the way into the gingiva all the way up to when you until you meet resistance and you hit something hard like the bone now if you can see in this image this is the facial view of how we are doing 
transitable probing where we are running the probe across the bone. However, the same thing when we are doing it in the interdental area, you will be able to identify whether it is a crater or not because ideally speaking when you have the interdental surface, this is how the tooth looks. So, your bone morphology also follows, sorry, this is how it is. Okay. So, your bone morphology is also somewhat like this. In an osseous crater, as we know, it is a two-wall defect which looks like a crescent moon shape. So, when you run the probe, you will feel that there are different levels up to which the probe is getting penetrated. As a result, you will be able to identify to some extent the morphology of the bone defect. However, like I told you, in your exam, if you have given, been given an option between of raising a flap or a flap surgery and transgenital probing, your answer should be raising a flap and observing the bone defect. Okay.